Hey everybody, my name is Joseph Palumbo and I'm a member of the Managed Cloud Support Team here at Rackspace. And today I want to talk to you about the first five things that we do every time we start a new project on a cloud server. Now some of you might be familiar with a very, very informative Knowledge Center article that we have available on our website called The First 48. And it covers a lot of information as far as what you need to do to get started using the cloud service platform. But I thought I would shrink it down a little and just give you what I think are the top five things that we do here at Rackspace. So first and foremost, probably the most important thing is we plan it out. We figure out who our audience is. We determine what our scaling needs are going to be. Is it going to be an external site, an internal site that helps us drive security? But the bottom line is it lets us know what type of architecture we need to deploy. And there's a couple choices that you can implement there. Once we do that, one little pro tip that I'd like to share with you is to use a common naming convention. It's very fun to name your servers Marge, Homer, Bart, but at the end of the day, name it as though somebody else were gonna be managing it after you. So web one, web two, DB1, proxy server, these are all things that are gonna make managing your project a lot easier in the future. The second thing we always do is we set up backups and monitoring. Now, with cloud servers, we let, we let you decide whether or not you're gonna back up your server, how you wanna back it up, and if you're gonna monitor it. So it's not set up by default, but we almost always take the time to set up our backups and our monitoring directly within our control panel. If you have any questions on how to do that, you can always look at that first 48 article I talked about. The next thing we like to do is set up our local configuration. So what that means is, we set up the server, or rather, we set up the computer that we're gonna be using in order to connect to that server. So this is a couple different things. This is generating SSH keys. This is going ahead and uh, establishing aliases to connect to that server, as well as configuring any FTP clients or MySQL clients that you're gonna be using to help program on the server. Once you've done that, it's a really good idea to do some real basic server security. And there's some great articles, once again, in that first 48 Knowledge Center that talks about this. But bottom line, you wanna add some users, you probably wanna change some passwords. And if you wanna get really secure, you can even go in and you can limit how you connect to that server using the SSH config file. Last but not least, what we always like to do is set up our external services. So a lot of times, Rackspace, cloud servers, they're like building blocks, you can build a lot of things with them, but there are some really cool, specialized, external third-party companies that can really bring a lot of value to your project. So things like New Relic, SendGrid for email, CloudAbility to monitor utilization, things of that nature, these are things that even we use internally to help us manage projects that we use to help bring you support. So in a nutshell, these are the five things we like to do internally whenever we do projects on cloud servers. I thought I'd share them with you. Hope it's a little bit helpful. If you have any questions, hit us up on the support floor. Once again, this is Joseph Palumbo. See you on the internet.